Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I have the Google Home Mini here and we're gonna be unboxing it and taking a look at what it's all about. But I've actually got a second one here, so there's going to be a giveaway in the near future. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when I post that video. Also, if you guys are interested in picking one of these up, there's a link in the description. You can check it out for yourself. Anyway, let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off here by taking a look at the charcoal version of the Google Home Mini here. And you can see, we'll take a look around the box. So on the front side, we have the charcoal version. You can see the color. On the other side here, you can see some things that you can ask the Google Home Mini. Just start with OK Google. And this is gonna be using the Google Assistant. So here's a few things you can ask it. We'll give it a try at the end. On the back, you can see some more information about it, small and mighty. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to read that. On the last side here, you can see some applications as well as devices that'll work with the Google Home Mini. So not too much to the unboxing at all. Here we have the Google Home Mini here, and it's really solid when you put it on the table from the bottom here. So like just pushing it with one finger, I can move my whole table. Taking a quick look around, you'll notice at the top, it has a really nice charcoal fabric. On the side, we have a micro USB power port, and then we have a mute switch and you can see it's orange when it's muted. On the bottom, we have a Google logo, and then we have a reset button. Setup is simple. Just connect the USB power port to the Google Home Mini. Welcome to Google Home. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. So I'm gonna be setting this up on an iPhone, but you can use an Android device as well. So I'm gonna open the Google Home application. We'll tap get started. Then you wanna select an email account. If you don't have one set up, you can set it up. And it's gonna to start to search for devices. Once it finds the device, tap next. It's going to connect. You can see the lights are turning on. When you hear the sound, go ahead and click yes. Then you want to set up where the device actually is. I'm just going to say it's in my office if they have that. So we'll say office, next. You wanna set it up with your network. Once you're connected, it's gonna give you some examples here of how it works. We'll tap next, then click yes, I'm in to confirm. We'll tap continue. You wanna allow it to access this so that way you can actually talk to it. So you wanna repeat those words that show up on screen. Okay, Google. Hey Google. Okay Google. Hey Google. And now the system recognizes my voice. So we'll tap continue. Want to allow Google Home to access your location while you're using the app. For iPhone, this pops up here. I'm going to allow it for now. And then you can just start connecting anything that you want with it. So if you have Spotify, anything like that, I'm just gonna say next for now. We'll leave it all at standard stuff here. We'll tap next. Okay, and it looks like we're ready. We can tap continue here. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. So now we can just go ahead and start asking it some questions, giving it some commands, and you can do all kinds of things. First off, we can say, hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. Second timer for five minutes, starting now. And it'll remind you in five minutes. We can ask for scores, whether, hey Google, give me the hockey scores yesterday for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yesterday, the Lightning played the Blue Jackets. The final score was five to zero Lightning. Now, if you wanna add your smart devices so that you can connect it with your hub and control it, you need to move back to the app here. And what you wanna do is tap the little icon at the top right, and then your speaker will appear here with the last thing you're doing. We'll tap the three dotted button and then tap settings. From settings, you wanna tap home control. Now this is going to allow you to add things. We'll tap the plus at the bottom and you'll see all the devices you can add. So if you have light bulbs, smart plugs, security cameras, thermostats, whatever you might have, you can add it here if it's on the list. One thing to keep in mind with the Google Home Mini though is that it does not have a built-in hub. So your device that you're connecting with, for example, if you have a Philips bulb, you'll need the Philips hub to actually control it unless you have an actual Google Home with a hub built in or a Nest or a Chromecast, something that will allow you to connect these devices. With that being said, there are a lot of products that are starting to come out on the market that don't require a hub and just work 
with these smart devices such as the Google Assistant here. Now this one here is the TP-Link Smart Wi-Fi Plug Mini. I'll place a link in the description for this one as well as some of the others that work without a hub. So if you're interested in those, check them out. Now this little device here does not require a hub. It's a very basic plug. It has the smart ability to turn on and off whatever you have plugged into it. And because it's so small, it won't take up both outlets like a lot of these do. It comes with an app, so if you don't have a smart device, you can also just use the application. But what's great about this is that you can connect it and use commands with your Google Home Mini without a hub. So we have the Google Home Mini paired with our smart plug now, and all we have to do is just say the command. And you can customize what it says or what you're calling the actual plug to. So I called mine light. So I'm gonna say, hey Google, turn on the light. Okay, turning the light on. And there you go, we turned on the light. Same thing if you wanna turn it off. Hey Google, turn off the light. Okay, turning off the light. Now a couple of things to keep in mind if you're planning to purchase one of these is that the sound quality when playing music is not the best. Don't get this version if you're looking for something that has good bass, great sound, and you're planning to use it in a large room or even outside. This is kind of weak, especially when it comes to bass. Sometimes even on the higher levels, it'll almost hurt your ears, but it works great in small rooms. I use this one here in my office and it's great for background music. Now I have another one of these set up in the bedroom and the way it works in there is pretty simple. We have it set up to a smart light switch and what that does is give you kind of the freedom to get into your bed and then just say, Google, turn off the light rather than walking back to the switch or having a lamp turned on beside the bed. As I said, this is a great little device and when I first got it, I didn't think I was gonna be using it all that much, but I find myself using it more and more for things like setting alarms for wake up calls, reminders, my calendar, all kinds of features built into this. And honestly, the best way to get the most out of this is to play around with it. I have mine set up with a whole bunch of smart devices, a whole bunch of lists and groceries and things that I wanna set up and do, and it's working great. Now, something that gets overlooked with these devices is the actual effect that it'll have when you're outside of your home. We're not gonna be walking around with these. It's not gonna be plugged in at the grocery store when we're there. So when we ask the Google Home Assistant to create that grocery list, we can simply open up our phones in the app and see our grocery lists when we're outside. This is going to be that personal assistant side to these devices. And I personally am using that one a lot myself. Grocery lists, calendars, reminders, it's all there. And the app itself is even going to give you a reference of the last few things you've asked it to do. So if you can't remember what you want it to remember, it's right there as well. So that is pretty much it for the Google Home Mini, but before we go, I do wanna know if you guys wanna to try to win one of these. Let me know in the comments if you want me to give this one away. This one is the gray version here. If you do, let me know in the comments. We'll do a giveaway video or a giveaway live stream, something like that where you guys can win this one right here. Also, we are getting close to 100,000 subscribers on the channel and I'm going to be doing a big giveaway with that one. Let me know in the comments what you think I should give away at 100,000 subscribers and also share the video, share the channel, hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so for those of you who are watching right now, this has nothing to do with the video, but I do appreciate the support watching all the way to the end. This is actually a different thing. I wanna get your opinion because if you've watched this far, that means you obviously somewhat like what I'm posting or you're interested in my content. I want your advice on where you think I should go with the channel moving forward from 100,000 subscribers. Traditionally on this channel, we do a lot of iOS devices and how-to videos. I like to show you how these products work, not just show you all about them and give you specs. There's a lot of YouTubers already doing that, so I feel like let's get you using them and getting you using them effectively. So that's where the goal is here, but maybe if you guys wanna see more Android devices or cool tech devices that are useful for you that you might not know exist, let me know. And where you should let me know, here are my social media links right there. Now there's three of them, Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram. You can follow me on those and even send me messages. I've been actually helping people live through Messenger on the Facebook page, and I've been doing that for about two years. So if you didn't know that exists and you're stuck on something, feel free to ask if I'm available, I'll help you out. 
Also, if you guys have any questions regarding anything else, you can always go to any video on my channel, leave a comment. I respond to every comment that comes my way. And if you're a hardcore fan of the channel, you know that's actually true. If you guys aren't subscribed and you watch this far, subscribe, hit that bell button. And for those of you who are subscribed, hit that bell button on your YouTube. That way you actually get notified via your mobile device. And this way you don't miss any videos. Anyway, let me know what you guys think we should be doing going forward or what you want to see going forward because your opinion is what I actually really want to follow. If you watch this far into a video and you're watching me right now, that means that uh, I'm doing something that you enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.